Now that we know about TCP and UDP port numbers, we're ready to talk about how network address translation works on the internet. This is pretty important. It's really common, happens all over the place, and it's also a really critical way that we've addressed one very interesting design flaw with the internet, which is that we don't have enough IP addresses. So how does network address translation work? Network address translation is designed to allow computers with private IP addresses to communicate, to initiate connections with the rest of the internet. Now remember, these private IP addresses, so here's an example, 192.168.1.100. If you start trying to send a packet somewhere on the internet to this address, a router is going to reject it. This address is listed as unroutable. So any traffic destined for this address on the broader internet is immediately dropped. And so the question is, how does a computer with this address, and if you use a home wireless router, your computer probably has an address like this. Look it up. Um, but how does a computer with an address like this actually initiate a connection to the rest of the internet? So here's what happens. The first thing it does, in order for network address translation to work, the translation has to be performed by a computer that has a public IP address. So this is a private IP address. There's no way to get a packet here. But this computer is connected to this wireless router. And this wireless router has a public IP address. If this wireless router doesn't have a public IP address, this doesn't work. So the idea here is that uh, the website you're visiting, let's say it's google.com, is actually going to talk to this wireless router. And the wireless router is going to forward the traffic back to this node that has the private IP address. So the question is, um, again, how, how does this work? So let's say I initiate a connection to Google. And I'm saying I want uh, to open a port to Google uh, port 80. Let's say that's maybe one of the ports on which its web server runs. So I want to have a connection uh, to port 80 at Google. And let's say I'm going to open up that connection to client port 10,024. Uh, 10, so I want to start a TCP connection um, that goes uh, from port 80 on Google to port 10,024 on my local machine. So when I initiate that connection, what the router is going to do is it's going to say, look, if you go out there on the broader internet and you try to get people to talk to 192.168.1.100, never going to work. So I'm going to help you. So the router is going to do is it's going to make a note of something. It's going to say, when I, it's going to create, um, it's going to choose a port locally. Um, let's say that it chooses port 2000. Okay, So it's going to say, when I see traffic that's destined for my port 2000, I know to forward that on to 192.168.1.100 port 10,024. So when I see an incoming packet for this connection, I'm going to rewrite the packet. This is critical to network address translation working. The router is actually taking the TCP packets and changing the port numbers in them to get this to work. So I initiate this connection. The router removes my IP address. It replaces my IP address with its own IP address. So it initiates a connection to Google right, on port 80, and it uses its own port 2000. So now the router that's performing the network address translation has a connection open on my behalf to Google. And so when I send data to the router, it forwards it to Google so I can do things like, for example, ask Google for its home page. When Google sends data back, it's actually sending data to this router. And that's possible. The router has a public IP address. When the packet arrives at the router, the router says, OK, I see an incoming packet for a connection on port 20,000. What do I do with it? looks it up in this table. It says, aha, I remember that I set up a connection on port 20,000 for this node that's connected to me that has a private IP address. So it takes that packet. It removes port 20,000. It replaces it with port 10,024. And it removes its uh, destination IP address. And it replaces it with 192.168.1.100. And it sends it on to me. And every packet that is sent from Google to me has this happen. And every packet that I send to Google, same thing. The uh, destination port is, rather than uh, 10,024, 10, it's replaced with 20,000. And the IP address, rather than this private IP address, which is not routable, is replaced with the router's IP address. Now, obviously, the router has lots of available ports. And
And so it, if it has a bunch of clients over here, let's say it has another client, 192.168.1.101, and, whoops, 101, and it also wants to connect it to Google, it can do the same thing. So it can say, okay, let's say that it sees a new connection for 192.168.1.101, port 10024. It wants to use the same destination port, it's a different IP address. It creates a new incoming port, let's say it's 2001, and 20001 does the same thing. So by applying this mechanism, this router can actually support lots of connections from clients that are behind it to the outside world. Now here's the only problem with this. If somebody out here wants to initiate a connection with one of these clients back here with a private IP address, that is basically impossible. It doesn't work with this scheme. Because the way that the mapping is set up is by the router watching clients initiating connections with the rest of the world. If a connection comes in here, for, first of all, there's no way for it to get here, right? I mean, if I start a packet on the other and I say send it to 192.168.1.100, that packet just gets dropped right away. So it's unclear how to initiate a connection to these clients in here. And that's why network address translation is most useful for computers that essentially function as as clients. So your laptop doesn't run a web server, so it doesn't need a public IP address. It can just use a private IP address. And as long as the laptop is the one making the connection to the outside world, the scheme works beautifully. So this is network address translation. This is what allows us to, and, and keep in mind the other thing here, which is that there's one public IP address here that's used by the router, but it can support hundreds of clients that are connected to it. And so what I've been able to do is I've been able to take one public IP address and and now expand it and use it to serve 100 machines. Now again, the limitation here is that those machines can't act as servers, it's difficult to contact them, but they can do most of the things that you do online.